Hi, everyone. Frank Kruda and I are very happy to launch the podcast of Crisis and Critique. This is our first uh, episode. The Crisis and Critique podcast seeks to intervene and reflect, discuss and engage from a philosophical perspective what happens outside of uh, philosophy. For this purpose, it will host guests from a diverse array of practices. We will discuss the work of our guests, but also contemporary or post events, as well as phenomena that we or our guests find remarkable, significant, or irritating. Our guest today is Sebastian Wolf, singer and guitarist of the Danish rock band Kellermensch. Sebastian, hi, and welcome to the Christ and Critique podcast. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Hi, Sebastian. Hi. It is a, a huge pleasure that we can start this podcast with you. Um, so we, we thought we, we begin this podcast uh, almost by historicizing a bit in the temporal manner. Um, so we say something about, we, about the past, move to something more present, and then look at future plans. So you will have gotten this question like a zillion times already. Yet, um, the name of the band, right? I mean, you're the singer and um, one of the guitarists of uh, uh, Keller Mensch. So, um, Keller Mensch, a reference to Dostoevsky, that immediately brings back um, associations, um, not only simply to literature, but to the existentialist tradition. Literally, Keller Mensch is a man of the cellar, right? Um, why this name? Um, and what maybe, maybe you could also say, what is the seller? I mean, is the human condition seller, cellular? Um, are we there conf confined um, against one's will? Um, I mean, no one chooses to be born after all, right? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, the name, um, I think uh, back in like 2006, we started writing uh, the album without having a band name. And at the time, uh, I was uh, reading uh, existentialist literature a lot. Uh, and I remember talking to uh, Anas, our drummer. And at one point, we were sort of laughing at the, the dark uh, nature of uh, book titles uh, by Sartre and, and uh, mm -hmm. others in, in the tradition. And I think... Um, uh, I think uh, when we started talking about the content of our lyrics and what, how we wanted to, um, okay. yeah, sort of develop uh, a lyrical universe, it became clear that there were, in our minds, some similarities to uh, what Dostoevsky is doing in, in Kellermensch. Uh -huh. So sort of taking somebody's... Um, everyday life and dramatizing it. So it becomes very dramatic and it deals a lot with this sort of uh, pressure to somehow, uh, I don't know how to put it, to, you know, feeling the pressure of sort of uh, living up to the norms of society, trying to conform, but at times the uh, uh, narrator of, uh, in the story is also, someone who at times feels very superior to the norms of you know, free of them and uh, and he sort of falls up and down in the mm -hmm. <laughs> how he feels his uh, life is, is going so i think for us we didn't think a lot about it it was like hey we see some similarities and this uh, is a is a good name <laughs> so mm -hmm. so we took uh, the name and um and then I think over the years, I've heard uh, read people sort of dig deeper. And I was like, hey, this is, uh, um, uh, it sounds like we were smarter than we were. Uh. <laughs> but uh, I think definitely for us, for me now, it's uh, definitely, it makes sense to say that we write lyrics about, you know, everyday life in like, 2022 but having the sort of what goes on in the cellar for me is is the irrational the uh, urges and uh, these things that collide with expectations of normality and conformity in society 
<laughs> and the the sort of problems that arise trying to manage these two uh, forces in in your life, I think. Uh -huh. uh, to follow up on 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 the question that Frank asked and on on your uh, on your answer, is there that therefore what your music makes audible, like uh, not only the songs of Kellermans, but the thought of 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 the band uh, itself. Like, uh, is there any other mensch than uh, Kellermans, uh, so to speak? Uh, is this the position that uh, you guys assume when you start writing songs? Uh, I don't know if, uh, I think we've always, um, you know, one of the things I have a hardest time uh, answering is why our songs are so dark. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I think, I don't know why, maybe, uh, Maybe I gravitate towards viewing life this way. If there are any other types of mention, I think that there are. I think pe some people um, have a different experience of life. Maybe also one person can have, I think there's a victorious mention, almost an, a person who <laughs> manages to conquer in all aspects of life and to overcome these obstacles and maybe they experience every day uh, very differently. Uh, I don't know. I think so. Maybe there are different uh, types of men, but maybe there are also, uh, you know, different times. Sometimes you are on a roll and you might not need this outlet of focusing okay. on uh, these places. But I think there's a lot of people when, when we play shows and so that feel a sort of, uh, I don't know, uh, relief or uh, something when they see these problems dramatized in a way uh, on stage, they maybe they sort of feel like, well, maybe my problems in my life are now somehow, <laughs> um, I don't know, uh, not that they become smaller or something, but they become okay, more okay, because um, I think one of the things that uh, inspired me from reading literature, which I think literature is very good at, is uh, is creating, you know, uh, I don't know what how to put it, heroes or a, a narrator who is someone you can, um, you know, sympathize with and and hope will succeed. Mm -hmm. I think you can take any circumstance, any situation, and create such a, a, a character. Uh -huh. you know, uh, Charles Bukowski could take like uh, shitty bars and a life that seems filled with uh, procrastination <laughs> and uh, vices <laughs> and write a person that I think most people will root for and say, I hope this guy makes it. I hope he... Uh, and uh, that, uh, to me, when I, uh, uh, that's what I think music should do. And uh, a good art should give people this, uh, should be able to take almost any subject, any situation, and uh, insist that there's a life worth uh, leading and worth improving and rooting for, I think. I, I, I like that a lot. I mean, I, I find that very, I mean, compelling um, to say if one dramatizes problems and by representing them yeah. they 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 get less shitty right <laughs> they get yeah. so, right by, by addressing problems they are less problematic because i mean it, it reminds me so freud's um freud's um um or psychoanalysis um um in general um basically has the the approach to transform what is unlivable pain into what at one point I think Freud calls common unhappiness, right? It's just it is just like total shit. But then if you if you can find a way of being ordinarily unhappy, then then it's kind of better already, right? And so and yeah. that that requires a staging. I mean, in some sense, that 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 has to do with um, I think in the Sorry, I'm, 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 I might be over-interpreting your Twitter account, but your um, and I never said that sentence before, believe me. Um, but, and but, you're not uh, even on Twitter. Uh, I'm not even on Twitter, <laughs> so I'm sorry. Um, but, 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 um, but, but you're, you're, you pointed out in, in, your, in the announcements, um, the Twitter announcement of the new album, 
that your new album is the most accomplished, right? And if we if we're talking about what we just been talking about, right? The, mm -hmm. um, it is uh, dramatizing of problems. It might be it 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 it. it, it it makes things better, maybe not by offering solutions, but by expressing the problems, right? By by, by staging them, by by making them audible, by, by and articulate or uh, articulable. Um, um, how would you say that? I mean, the Twitter Twitter announcement says uh, the new album is the most accomplished. Um, how do you? Uh, measure that accomplishment. How how would you say? Is it is it compositional? Are you writing songs differently? Is it stylistic? Is the style change? Because I because the style seems quite coherent actually to me as a listener. Yeah. Um, or is it otherwise? I mean, um, I didn't hear much. I mean, does the the elements um, that you already released um, didn't point to a a change in lyrical composition or whatever. So, uh, where where would you say that the that the um, let's say the the amelioration or the improvement of or the the, the greater accomplishment lies? I'm, I'm more curious. For, for me, it's it's always the 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 big um, the big uh, problem or uh, job for me to do when we start writing is to somehow have. Uh, you know, to give, it's not just to write X amount of songs, mm -hmm. but to put them together and somehow give them something to say together, you know, that, that, that it somehow has meaning. And that's difficult to do when you, like, I do, don't, I don't usually want to make like a concept album or something. I, I, I like to write a song and ask myself, what is this song about? And then go down that rabbit hole and come back up and start all over again. And then I, I'm always worried that uh, things might be incoherent or um, yeah, not really saying anything. Uh, and and in, I think with this album, the things that for us feel very um, uh, accomplished is, is that the song and the, the album is very, uh, each song carries um, it's, a, it's like equally good. Someone, we don't really um, do a lot of, uh, you know, peaks and valleys, and and we have sort of uh, we use less of these characteristics that are very. You know, we use strange instruments. Usually, we use uh, an upright bass that sounds very, uh, yeah, hoarse and. Vroom makes a characteristic sound and we use old organs. On this album, it, it wasn't really necessary. It was um, sort of more, um, in Danish we say skull into being, it means cut to the bone. I, mm -hmm. I don't say that in English, but, but, and one of the things I could have been worried about was when we lay down these characteristics, I would be, I would have, um, well, I would be afraid that then we become more like less like Kellermans. But on this album, it just became clear what what that means. It's mm -hmm. not the uh, individual instruments. It's it's uh, something that you know is uh, hiding between the notes and uh, between the words. Mm -hmm. and I think this album really sort of uh, sets that uh, and I, yeah, it make it makes that clear. And then I think when you hear the album, it's, you know, it's been a strange couple of years and uh, several times I've stopped what I was writing and what, how, what do you say in these times, you know, because I didn't want to make anything that was sort of specific to a pandemic situation or I'm always very careful writing, um, politically and, and stuff like that. I, I really want this to be, you know, what our music says to be true, even if there's, uh, if these specific times are, are different, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that I'm really happy about uh, the album in, in these, uh, so I'm looking forward to see what the, yeah, what people will think of it. And uh, so. Yeah. Uh Yes. Yeah, so earlier you said that Keller mentioned some sort of a, a 
doesn't fall into any category, uh, so to mm -hmm. speak, when you, when you were. Uh, but uh, what is very interesting, and I think uh, Frank and I were discussing this, uh, you guys, like, the, the, the band is, itself is like mixes styles. There is uh, a principal dedication and, uh, and seriousness aligned with consistent uh, melancholy that underlies uh, your compositions, so to speak, which is also oft, often, all too often brought uh, uh, together or broken up by moments of aggressivity, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that can remind the listener uh, of the idea that the scream is the initial uh, vocal uh, indication of a human, uh, uh, human being starting to, uh, to exist. Is it a part of the reason why you don't or rather didn't want to be identified uh, or associated with a, with a Danish uh, uh, scene? Is this non-conformity, so to speak, uh, in regard to the local scene of, of, of Denmark? Yeah, I think it's um, a combination of, uh, I mean, there's definitely something to this, you know, um, I think one of the reasons that we find it hard to sort of uh, put ourselves in one category is because we, we think uh, outside of these categories, but the, the, the things you mentioned are things we think about. Like um, you mentioned this about the, the um, scream being, you know, the first thing a baby says when it's born. We, we think of it like primality, you know, in the, in the basement where irrationality and urges, they look, there's something primal to that. And then we, so we like to um, make sort of, uh, what do you call these things? Opposites collide in our music. Yeah. So uh, when, when we start off by referencing Dostoevsky and thinking about these things, we run the risk of being like overly thought, you know, thinking too much about things and then clashing that with something primal and this is something that we um yeah we're very focused on having these opposites in our music also as well with the conformity we 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 are obviously sort of conform in many ways the way we dress is sort of very conform we have like we, i remember when we talked about it, it's like we dress like we're going to some sort of uh, what do you call it, uh, not casual event, you know, <laughs> and that's very conform. And when we yeah. write songs, we are also sort of conform in the way we sort of write songs that are sort of like the Beatles, the, the yeah. A, B, A, B, C, B mm -hmm. parts, you know, and then, mm -hmm. but what we try to do with the instruments is to uh, distort it, make yeah. it something that's no longer conform, but we try to have these two, and when you think like that, it, it just becomes sort of um, unimportant, whether it is metal or rock. And I think when we started out, the Danish scene was um, a, a different scene where we didn't really fit in. It was very difficult to find. And we live in Esbjerg, which is a remote city. It's a, for Danish standards, it's a big city, but there's a long distance to the next big city. And mm -hmm. we are as almost as far away from Copenhagen as you know, we're on the West Coast. Copenhagen is on the East Coast and the whole music industry is located in uh, Copenhagen and, and a little in Aarhus as well. Mm -hmm. So there was like an obvious distance to, so for us, it was like, this is um, something different. And at the time when we started, I think, Danish music was, it was very electronic and sort of like innovative and uh, to me sort of cold sounding, where I thought we are sort of like the dusty book you take off the shelf and the, <laughs> we are very, um, you know, we, we spend a lot of time worrying about texture when we talk about production. I want, we want to be able to feel the, uh, the wood from the drums and the, you know the reeds and the organ and, and and these things so for us it was different but over the years there are some things that i sort of feel a connection to i was at a museum one time in helsinki where there was an exhibition and they focused a lot on the, the scandinavian melancholy and i think that tradition we can totally see that you know uh, we were very inspired by painters, you know, Edvard Munch, uh, Hamas, these, they have this sort of melancholy and 
you know, a texture, the, the way they paint the, and I remember when we, even when we did the first album, we, we sort of thought that a lot of heavy music is very precise, almost machine-like. And these painters were uh, a, a source of comfort for saying, it, in painting, you can paint, you know, violently and yet not precisely. Mm -hmm. If a monk does this, uh, you know, Die Brücke, very expressive. And there was a, this must be translatable to music. You can hit the drums hard and still not be, you know, yeah. still have this human feel and the sloppiness or whatever you call it. Yeah. And uh, so for us, this these things concern us more than uh, checking which genre it, it is. Yeah. Doing. yeah. I mean, I, I like the idea that I, I, I find that very compelling that um, the failure to fit in the genre is exactly right the genre sure. um I, I think that is that is that is a pretty brilliant way of i mean it's very different from i don't know dillinger escape plan or whatever right i mean they, they, they're, they're great but but it's a very different different kind of approach um to composition recording and to what a what a what a what a song is i mean um, because it seems, and I'm, 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 I'm transitioning into the next question, um, because it seems what you just said indicates that you're, you're trying to find a way of dealing with these contradictions, right? And even mm -hmm. the contradictions with, I mean, I was <clears throat> um, in preparation of this interview, I was um, thinking of Army Ends, right? I mean, Army Ends is a hymn somehow i mean it's, it has precisely those structures right and it thematizes the problems of hymnicity one could say right because uh it problem problematizes on some level on, 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 the, on the lyrical level um like on the content level one could say um that we're all singing along it's it, it generates what 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 um one could call an earworm, right? So, I mean, mm -hmm. something you can't get out of your head and then you hum along, sing along, whatever. Um, but at the same time, that seems to be precisely the point of Army Ends, right? I mean, so uh, mm -hmm. there, 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 there is that. Um, so, so how do you deal with that compositionally? I mean, so is, is, that, is that what you... What, what is supposed to create an awareness? Or, I mean, how do you deal with that? I'm, I'm, I'm just curious. Yeah, well, with Amiens, I remember it was one of the songs that uh, changed a bit uh, in the hands of the band. I remember the first sort of rough recording I did of it, mm -hmm. where I just did everything. I had uh, a drum beat and I wrote it on an upright bass and I don't play upright bass at all. I just sort of, and I remember it sounded sort of like an 80s ballad, very melancholic. It was slower. <laughs> and the lyrics sort of started from this, you know, a, a narrator feeling sorry for himself, semi-depressed. And then having this, I remember thinking about, you know, these thoughts on a determinism, free will, mm -hmm. you know, where we're at. And then just sort of thinking about when you're feeling, feeling like shit, maybe there's some comfort in... The fact that, you know, uh, it's not your fault, it's, you're just <laughs> following. Uh, and, and, and then I just started to, you know, work from that sort of mind space. And when we started playing it with the band, it became like something more uh, bombastic and uh, hymnal. And uh, the vocal line in the chorus becomes very much like a slogan or something mm -hmm. and uh i thought that was um yeah kind of fitting but it's uh it's it's strange how songs can uh you know change when they when more people get involved and needs you know you add muscle and uh, mm -hmm. you add arms and legs and all of a sudden it's uh it's a different beast and i, yeah. I think it's a uh, it's a uh, it's strange song that sort of like yeah looks at the whole determinism deterministic thing where maybe we don't have very much to say about the choices we make and um, maybe there's some comfort in that but um, i'm not sure um yeah that it's 
you know, provides any sort of answers as to whether it's true. <laughs> yeah. But also it's just like the high point of, I mean, creation, right? I mean, you somehow created a song that's, I mean, that, that, articulates that and you created that i mean so yeah um so so um but sorry um agon um is uh, no no it's fine it's fine uh, uh, uh no i was just uh, thinking that uh, um the color match album has been uh described as an experimental rock right yeah. and uh my question is what it is that you were experimenting <laughs> with you know and if Rather, if this is an appropriate uh, label, mm, I think uh, for us, when we started with the first album, it definitely felt like we were experimenting. We, um, because I think we had sort of more, uh, what do you call these uh, rules or dogmas? And, you know, basically we didn't know what we were doing, but we had sort of rules. Nothing on the first album was. Uh, everything was recorded with a microphone in a room. You know, the, these were like decisions we made because we were so worried about, you know, texture. So we used no uh, keyboards or sounds that were not played. So we have like an old organ, which is electric. And then we put it through an amp, played in a room and mic'd it up. And then we, we used a lot of... Um, you know, we, we th did spend a lot of time thinking about, you know, drums and looking to these other art forms saying, okay, maybe we don't need to be super tight and uh, maybe we can just, uh, you know, play, even though we play loud, just be sloppy and have like uh, tons of room on the drums and, and everything. It, for us, it felt like we were experimenting a lot and we had like, intros and uh, some some songs had uh, improvised lyrics and uh, yeah three vocal lines on top of each other stuff like that i think uh, on the new album and on the second album goliath we sort of i don't know if we experiment less but we we've been more focused on like the songwriting and what is this song trying to say and uh, if that takes away a bit of the experimentation, I, I'm not sure it's like that because I think we are very much sort of concerned about the, um, what do you call it, the, the big picture, you know. There's not a lot of freedom for the musicians to say, I want to play like this, you know, because I feel like it. It's like everybody's looking at each other and saying, what, what are you doing? And this song on the new album, there's a song called uh, Under, which is sort of about feeling, you know, being in a black hole. That, so, so then it's like, then Anna's never hits a cymbal, never does something that sounds bright and all of the instruments, you know, so we, we, we work like that. If these days, if that makes us experimental, I'm not sure, but that's how we think, you know, we try to make the whole band uh, yeah, communicate what is going on in this song. Uh, that might warrant us to say that we're experimenting, but I'm not sure because in the end it's music, you know, but yeah, I think that's... Uh, but, but, but I mean, but but that links quite... I mean, you're, you're saying, uh, if I understand correctly, that there is an organized and disciplined kind of sloppiness. Um, and um, that, that is, I mean, um, another contradiction Victory, kind of thing that you make into a method, um, and um, I mean when the new album, so we're moving to the future somehow, um, will be called Capitulism. Yeah. Um, uh, and again, I'm I, I have the task of reading your uh, Twitter post, which says, "I don't know <laughs> if a curse rests upon us. It has almost left us with no energy. It is an album that surrenders its weapons yet." hits you in the spine. It's almost accomplished work today. But but say something more about that curse. I mean, what what is that, right? I mean, what is a what what is that curse that drove you to do that? But it's unclear if it really is a curse, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, say something about that. I'm yeah, that. yeah, definitely. I mean, we spent a lot of years making our second album and um 
I remember early on in the process, uh, I think I suggested the album title Goliath as like a, a play on this, the difficult second album thing. Mm -hmm. And then we, mm -hmm. we spent so many years struggling to get that album out that it became like, you know, almost, uh, we call it almost a prophetic title. Mm -hmm. You know, it became, uh, yeah, it, it, it was like the title knew what was in store with that album. So having that experience and then working on this album, which ended up, I mean, we cut off three years of our process, which we we're happy about, but we still took like five years. And in the end, I think this title, was also semi-prophetic because, you know, it deals with uh, cap capitulating, you know, that's, and that is an image that is invoked uh, a lot on the songs diff from different angles. So that was sort of the idea of having this made up word. Um, but it also became prophetic because working, finalizing this album was so hard and almost felt like, you know, we just give up now. <laughs> we wanted it to have 10 songs. I couldn't uh, do it. It was like, it's nine songs. It's, uh, we give up now and we'll release it. And I remember after, after I don't know, um, surrendering the album to the, to the label, it was like, you get like a couple of days where you don't listen to it. And then I started listening to it and the band started listening to it. And then, it was like, oh my God, it's it's good, <laughs> and and that was a very uh, strange, uh, you know, that was very lucky because it did not feel like I'm in control now. I had hopes about what I want to say, and we have hopes about how we want it to sound, but it was like really really tough. Uh, I spent months just working on it uh, a lot, and the songs are very. Um, they are very dark. I think all of our music is so dark, but this album has a specific, well, I don't know what you call it. In, in Danish, you'd call it opgune, you know, sort of surrendering mm -hmm. darkness to it. It's just unpleasant to, uh, <laughs> I hope it's not unpleasant to listen to, but it's, it's an unpleasant space to be in. And I was stuck in that space for months, really just trying to get it done. And then, you know, just ending up saying this is it i can't do it anymore and uh so now we are very happy about it and uh, i think you know so that's sort of the if the curse feels like now it's for us it's sort of a joke we we'd like to leave the studio saying this was great man we had fun <laughs> and this is uh, just how <laughs> we wanted it to sound but now it's the second time in a row and i was like we, we want to figure out how to make an album and have fun at the same time, but <laughs> um, uh, it's just, um, we haven't been able to figure that out. Maybe we'll get it right on the next one. <laughs> uh, I will follow up on uh, that Twitter uh, thing, which Frank uh, just, uh, just read, but how, how is it possible to make music by uh, surrendering one Weapons, you know, uh, Annie DiFranco said once claimed uh, that every tool is a weapon if one holds it right. Mm. Then uh, surrender one weapons uh, be turned into a principle of uh, musical composition, and if so, how to avoid turning it into uh, it into a cliche, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, or if we uh, if, if I put it uh, this differently, how and why is this different? Uh, from simply giving up on uh, musical, artistic, but certainly also political aspiration. I mean, bearing in mind that one uh, has to comply with the laws of the industry and, uh, and all the rest of it. Yeah, well, I think um, some of those things for us um, come easy. I think uh, surrendering our weapons for us on this album is, you know, like I talked about before, uh, not using some of the very characteristic, uh, you know, tools that we usually use. Mm -hmm. On this album, we we've so we play, I think, more like everybody else, and you know, so we we don't have uh, a lot of the characteristics that only we do, and that was one of the things that, like I said before, 
could worry me, you know, saying, are we making something that is like a lot of other people are saying, but on this album, it just felt like, you know, we are, we're putting down a lot of those weapons and we're somehow made something that is maybe even more challenge than when we were using these very characteristic uh, tools, like uh, specific instruments and mm-hmm. whatnot. So, and then you, said something about um, yeah about this with the industry I think for us you know that's the funny thing it it, to me it doesn't sound like an album that sort of gives up on its artistic aspiration it sounds like you know uh, I I remember talking to um, Anas I think it was from the band and being like there's there's listening to the album now has a sort of a mystery to it, which is why this album, I, I should feel like this is boring. You know, this is just rock instrumentation, drums, bass, guitar, less of the characteristics, less strings, less, you know, upright bass, but it just sounds very um, moving and very, you know, gripping. And that's, uh, I can't explain why that is. What is it in the notes? Is it in the notes? Is it in the the way the drums play? Is it in the sound? I don't really know, but to me, this, this it sounded, it feels to me like by putting down these things, we've sort of made something that is more, uh, more killerman's like or more compelling, more beautiful. And um, yeah, that's uh, a wonderful thing I think about listening to the album now. Um, I mean, just just to because it's it seems to be another contradiction that we're I mean that you're dealing with here, right? I mean, on mm-hmm. some level, I mean, you're clearly doing radio play length kind of things. I mean, even though your some yeah. of your songs are longer, but 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 you're not composing like 90 minute songs or whatever. Um, but, 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 but you're, and hence you're operating within capitalism, one could say, right? Um, yeah. But, um, but capitulism is not simply capitulating to capitalism, if I may say so, um, right? I mean, it's not just like saying surrender to that form. I mean, you're not, not over commercializing or whatever, right? Obviously not. But 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 the, the I, I was thinking, and uh, maybe 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 you can say something about how you ex- how how you deal with that formal restraints. I mean, Heiner Müller, right? The theater theater writer, uh, and you don't need, know uh, need to know anything about him. And um, but but he was writing in the GDR and the German GDR. And when it broke down, he basically had a writer's break and uh, like a creative breakdown because he basically said, I could only write during the GDR because it restrained my form, right? And, and uh, this form restriction allowed for something. Um, so in some sense, maybe, the, maybe the, the, the radio play length form does something that allows for something else um, or whatever. I mean, just I'm I'm we're, I'm I'm curious. What do you make of that? I mean, of the musical form or the relation between capitalism and capitalism? Yeah, well, I mean, the the album was written, you know, uh, not like a concept album, but the the frame of mind was this. I think in this in these strange times we're living in it seems like you know it, it's become clear that not everything uh, is possible you know and and i think uh, from everything to the pandemic to uh, not exclusively but also to the climate crisis and i think for a lot of people in their personal lives in their marriage in the workplace it's become clear not everything is possible and uh, I think, you know, so the, the, I think somewhere on the album, the idea or the, um, yeah, that whatever we are sort of normalizing towards as a society is not a free market, everything is possible, capitalism. Uh, 
-hmm. but one where we have to choose you know things we have to there are things we have to put down if we want to live a sustainable life mm -hmm. and i think the all of the thematics that we've dealt with fit this i think on a personal level you might uh, feel the the pressures of uh, you know society's ideas of the good life the good marriage and you know i think people are sort of experiencing a time where hey not everything is possible what can you look for then maybe being more concerned with what is necessary than what is possible mm -hmm. these are sort of the the problems lurking in this sort of capitalism maybe mm -hmm. we have to give up something <laughs> uh, and i think mm -hmm. you know that's sort of like one of the ideas that the album somehow teases with you know we I think in the Western world, we have used to the idea of living in capitalism, you know, for, for better or worse. But I think I also, this is many years ago, maybe 10 years ago, I think it was a French philosopher, I can't remember who it was, who said something about poverty. He says, we've reached the point where we're not talking about uh, erasing poverty. We can only uh, sort of indulge in voluntary poverty you know <laughs> the we have to somehow and i think on, on all aspects of uh life it's uh maybe and uh, something we have to become better at mm -hmm. in you know in your expectations uh, about your you know love life work life whatever it is maybe we have to balance you know what's necessary and what's possible Uh, better and these are sort of the ideas that are lurking in the uh, on the album oh, this is this is great uh, uh frank i continue right uh yes to raise this this question but from a from a uh, from a different uh, slightly different uh perspective uh, liberalism has always had a thing for for failure i mean they they really love it uh so there is a liberal uh way of claiming that uh humans just misachieve whatever they do You know, how, how do you avoid this? And uh, we, here, Frank and I are thinking about the song, uh, Another Drink, which we were discussing. It was released a couple of months ago, I think. Yeah, we were yeah. emailing with each other at that point when the single was, uh, was, was relieved, released, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Like, that song articulates quite clearly that one can do something even when things are fucked. You know, like uh, mm -hmm. when uh, sticking to some principle of consistency, it might be just drinking with someone who one is in love with or you're in love with so how do you avoid this you know like this mis misachieving or failure or... well i'm not sure um first off i'm not sure it is i don't know if i understand it correctly but i'm not sure that it is to be um avoid it <laughs> you know it's uh, yeah, i think yeah. um yeah i th i think nowadays um people want to succeed at everything i think this song is about you know uh, like you say consistency where it matters you know being aware about your values and uh, be forgiving about the vices that you have and saying to have you in your life created this character that you yourself root for and then you know uh that's sort of what this song deals with you know being not being perfect and maybe failing in some senses in in that song specifically in a relationship but still being someone who is um you know uh, uh yeah and a main character that you can root for and say i i, <laughs> I like this person for better or worse or something and i think that's Uh, something you know a, a way of looking at you know uh, i don't know what you call this like the value i think a lot of people are sort of insecure and maybe don't feel um you know i don't think you have to walk around loving yourself and being like oh this i'm the greatest person in the world but you at least have to look for this um yeah create this person through values through um consistent uh consistency and 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 you know 
putting your foot down and saying, this is, you know, like the chorus says, here I stand, yeah. uh, I can do no other, which I think is... Um, Luther. Uh, Luther, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, it's, no, it's, no. Been, it's been a quote that's, uh, yeah, stayed with me for a long time. And I think, you know, also, you know, you, you uh, in the previous question, you, you mentioned this about how do you avoid, like, you know, succumbing to the pressures of the music industry and the conformity. Like, that's one of the things I think when we release an album, I think it's almost refreshingly free of trends, mm -hmm. um, which is not something that we've actually sort of laid out a plan. How do we, we avoid sounding trendy? You know, it's usually something that bands try to, uh, you know, mm -hmm to, to uh, get some sort of fresh innovative sound mm -hmm. for us it's like no we just want to you know we've looked for our values and we want to do this mm -hmm. we still want to be innovative we still want to have something to say and be creative and all, but these are not uh, opposites you know mm -hmm. and uh, I think you know that's sort of how we do it we we are located in a city far away from the music industry. We do everything sort of, uh, I think uh, there's a um, musician in Denmark called Simon Kwam, who in a radio uh, interview uh, said something about us. He said, we were like fumbling in the darkness, you know, when we're talking about how our career have, has developed. And I think that was uh, pretty much uh, spot on. And I think also when I heard him say that, I think, who isn't, you know, who isn't fumbling in the darkness? Yeah. There are people who think they're not. Oh. And then there are people who are aware. We don't, we know what we know and uh, we do things um, slowly and uh, on our terms, I think, which has probably uh, held us back in areas, but not in others. Mm. So, you know, finding that balance uh, is important in life and in, uh, in art as well, I think. Mm. I think, I mean, I, I, it seems to me that the, the Luther reference is a good answer also to the seller question beforehand, right? I mean, because Luther, I mean, he has stand, I can do no other, means we're standing in a pot. I mean, he, he literally thought we're standing in a world of shit, right? I mean, it's just um, like horrible. That's all, and it's all going down the drain. But, but it, it, it means, what does it, or the question then is, what does it mean? To believe in that world, right? I mean, to stay consistent, to stay true to a principle, one could say, and then then we can make it make it less religious sounding, whatever. But it, mm -hmm. it means to stick to something, right? I mean, to um, and and somehow, I mean, you seem to be saying something similar when you say you want to write songs that hit you. Um, directly hit you in the spine right because i mean i was immediately thinking uh, just that's in brackets um descartes thought that the spinial gland is the seed of spirit right mm -hmm. so it's the it's it's it it's in the spine so you're hitting the spirit you're not hitting the body right i mean um but but um, um and and the, the, the stupid question then would be i mean is that what you're, what you're, what you're compositionally um, trying to achieve? Like writing, hit the spine, hits one could say, um, but I mean songs that hit the spine, um, and if they're successful, they're hit hits, as it were. Is that is that the like, um, because they they hit something, they 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 hurt, they they do something. Well, I don't think, you know, I think definitely a lot of times where we um, uh, worked on a song, I like to do, if, it, if a song uh, is intended to hurt, then I want it, you know, to feel like that. And uh, mm -hmm. we've had several songs where, you know, it feels like an open wound or something. It's, it's mm -hmm. very uh, rough and... Uh, uh, I've had uh, uh, people come up to me and say also about our the last album we put out, Goliath, that you know uh, that it was painful to listen to, not in a sort of like oh, it hurts my ears, but in this way that it sort of hits you. Um, and uh, it's I 
I think uh, after completing capitalism, I thought at one point, you know, I th are we sort of um, fascinated or infatuated by the idea of you know always having things hurt? Mm -hmm. And I thought if that's true, I I'm not sure because I want to do all sorts of stuff with my music, but if that's true, then on capitalism, I think we've sort of hit, um, it, you know, we can take it no further, I think. Uh, I'd, I'd like, if songs are meant to hurt, they should hurt, you know, I, it's like that, I, 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 I agree with, you know, that's what I try to do, but not every song is like that. I think Army Ants is not that type of song, it doesn't, you know, want to hurt like that, but other songs do. I think we made have made uh, several songs that are not as painful, but it's. I just like as a songwriter. I think if that's what I'm setting out to do, then I want to do it. Other times, I think we have a song also that's almost fun. I think it's up tempo <laughs> and sort of playful. It was a song called "Carrying My Name," and that was sort of the 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 experiment on that song. Is that can we almost have a sense of humor, you know, and can we, you know, be playful and and you know, so we try different things, but I think it's definitely we make clear, you know, uh, at least I do when I write a song. What is the purpose of this song? What is it trying to say? Mm -hmm. If it's trying to say something that, when you know, if if you're living through it, it hurts, and you know, that's the thing about you know, most everyday problems are just everyday problems. But when you are in them, they feel very important and they feel very. Uh, dramatic and that's sort of like what I try to do is to give it that you know sort of sense of drama and importance and uh, then when you're living it six months later you look back and <laughs> you are, maybe you hardly remember uh, but you know at the time it's uh, dramatic so that's definitely something I try to uh, we go very far to keep that feeling alive um, we don't try to gloss the productions and say, okay, does this fit radio? And does this, maybe if we, you know, we just try to make it as, you know, as close to the intention as possible. And if that means it, uh, I, I don't, you know, ever since we, we put out records, I, we never th considered radio uh, ever. Mm. I remember the, the, we put out the debut album and, um, the guy working PR was uh, at uh, like the big Danish radio station, DR, Danish yeah. Broadcasting. Every week he was out there plugging the bands he worked with. And he was like, Sebastian, they are asking for a single, you know, don't you want? And we were like, no, because to me that <laughs> meant we have to press a CD with only one song on it with the intention of getting ready uh, and we was like that's gonna wind up in the trash can <laughs> why, why would we do that <laughs> and weeks went by and it's like they're still asking it's like come on i'll burn a cd and bring it and uh, we wound up doing that and uh, got a little bit of airplay so i think in our suspicions we were right but we when we put out army it, it actually um got some radio effort but we don't really think like that like the 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 evolution of army was was not intentional it was something that happened when we all started playing the song but i think for us it's um we we don't re we we were always used instead of using like a, a term like a hit we used icebreakers because we when we talked about it, it like when have you ever heard become happy about a band by listening to a full album. Usually it's a friend saying, check out this song. And then you sort of take the uh, the premises of the song, or oh, go, this is cool. And then you might hear the next song go, oh, I'm not sure I like that, but you listen to it more and more. And mm. all of a sudden you take the sort of like the premises of the band and now you love the band, but you always start out by, you know, liking a song. So mm -hmm. I think there are some, some, you know, some sense to some of the conform ways the industry works. You can't really present an album. It's too, too big a work. Mm. So you take little songs, but they don't have to be looked at. Is it a hit? Is it an icebreaker? Is it something that will, you know, make the, the rest of the album clear to somebody? I think mm. that's how we think about it. Mm. 
And the brilliant thing about that is that you can still say, and it's very difficult, I think, to hear if you say swiftly in English the difference between capitalism and capitalism. Um, capitalism hurts if it works well, right? I mean, um, <laughs> um, it, 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 and, and I mean, the album will hurt in the best possible way, I guess. Um, um, yeah. Well, we're looking forward to, to it. And uh, just before we finish, uh, uh, you had a tour last year, didn't you? With Frank and I wanted to come and listen to you guys, but then, you know, life happened. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. and, uh, and we couldn't, but uh, the album comes out in May, if we are not mistaken, right? So what about the tour? Are you planning a tour for the album? And when does it start? So <laughs> Frank can, you know, I can actually, somehow, you know, make it to the to one of the concerts. <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, we are, we start playing a few festivals this summer, okay. but yeah. in October, maybe even late September, we have a tour, five shows in Denmark, and uh, I think we have one festival in Germany. I think it's right. called Blue Festival or something. Right. I'm not sure because I don't have the dates in front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we, we will come to one of these things for sure. Okay, that would be great. <laughs> Sebastian, thank you. thank you so much for this. It was it was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank that you. was absolutely great. Um, thanks. We'll stay in touch anyhow. Um, yeah. Take care. Bye. Ciao. Bye. <laughs>